Hey everyone, welcome to today's session, uh, our third installment on our class on the DC uh, tool that we've uh, just launched here, um, and that is our uh, EC and ECTV tool. Uh, my name is David Cash. I'm a member of the marketing team here at Mountain. Uh, I'll be going over today's uh, session. Again, uh, it's the EC and our ECT uh, DC tool uh, programming um, software. Uh, and all of the different things that uh, encompass the, what we've gone over so far. Uh, so we looked at error proofing, um, how the system can be used for that. Um, in our first class, we went over um, how to program it, uh, the jobs, the models, uh, how to screw count, uh, do the digital IOs. Uh, and then in our next class, we took a look at uh, the actual functionality of the tool, how to work through it, um, and how to navigate to it yesterday. Uh, we also worked on some of the workflow um, as it relates to um, how you actually do uh, some of the programming of the presets, the different parameters, some of the advanced fasting. Um, and then today's session, we'll look at uh, using the software, uh, how that is uh, used with the presets. Uh, we'll do a look at the real-time monitoring. Uh, we'll also look at the graphing function within the software as well. Uh, and how that that all works together uh, and then we have one more class remaining and that will be on our battery uh, cordless system um, in about uh, about an hour so uh, let's go ahead and get into today's um, demonstration so as we looked uh, yesterday we can come in and we can do our programming via the menu function and we can come in and we have our different menus that we can select from. So uh, what I've done now is I've connected um, the software to the system via the laptop uh, through the RS-232 connection. Uh, we could also use uh, an ethernet port uh, as well to connect, um, or we can do it uh, if the system is networked uh, and our laptop is on that same network. Uh, we can then access that um, via the ethernet port that way, or uh, the system itself is, has a built-in web server, so we can access that web server and do that uh, connection that way as well. So uh, in this case, uh, as I mentioned, I just have the RS-232 connection, uh, and so we'll go ahead and take a look at what the software um, has for us. And so when we um, first start with the software, this right here. You can see uh, on the uh, bottom of the screen here, um, we are connected to the unit. Um, this is the uh, tool that we have uh, connected or the controller. Um, we have some of the firmware version, the driver information um, down here. And uh, let me just get rid of some of these open tabs here. So uh, we have our uh, system uh, information here. Uh, this is where we connect or disconnect with the unit. So if I go ahead and disconnect, um, you can now see we are disconnected down here at the bottom. And then to connect to the unit, we can simply connect. We do that through our COM port um, and through the ID of the uh, controller. So um, at this point, um, we have our ability to go in and we can now do all of the settings and uh, adjust any parameter that we would like straight from the PC. And uh, a lot of the functions um, are basically grouped together as they are on the controller. So um, if we uh, go to the controller, uh, you'll see that if I log into the system again, under our parameter menu, um, let me just make an adjustment here. So you can see we have our uh, fastening tab, we have our advanced tab, uh, and so on through the menu on the controller. And it is uh, primarily we have the same functionality up here under the settings for the parameters uh, as well. So we have our fastening tab here. 
And if I open up the uh, fasting tab, you can see I, I now have access to all 15 presets. We have the ability to change the Titan strategy we would like. Um, so if we are working um, in torque control with angle monitoring, we can come in and we can set what our uh, target torque is. So if we have our target torque, uh, we want to change this to nine. We can go ahead and do that here. Uh, and so we have access to all of the presets um, and we can come in and we can simply program uh, the unit um, all together. So let me just jump back out onto the operation screen here. And you can now see that the target torque for preset one is now set to nine. Uh, if I come back out here and I change this to say 10, you can see that the system um, automatically updates the uh, setting um, as I'm doing it um, within the the uh, within the software. Um, so we can come in and we can change um, a number of the different parameters um, that we have here. The soft start. Uh, we have our angles that we can monitor as well. So we have our minimum angle and maximum angle. If you were uh, with us for our first class uh, on the error proofing um, and how that can work as uh, different layers of requirements that need to be met for a good fastening. Um, and again, we just have the ability to go ahead and do all of that within the uh, fastening um, tab here. Uh, we also have um, our advanced functions. Again, for all 15 uh, presets uh, up at the top here. And then we have our different parameters that we can come in and we can change. Um, so it makes it very easy to be able to navigate to quickly update um, any type of change that we would like to make um, within the system. We also have our screw count function. Again, this is a global setting uh, that can be used. Um, we do have the ability, again, to have uh, signals sent out um, at different points uh, if the system is uh, hooked up to some uh, line management um, through the inputs and the outputs. Uh, and then we also have our controller tab uh, this allows us to be able to go in and uh, change different um, items as it relates to the profile of the controller and how it works. So things like uh, what unit of measurement we're using. So currently right now we're in inch pounds. Uh, we can also change um, the reverse speed uh, of the tool um, that we're using. Uh, we can disable the reverse uh, function of the tool. We can add uh, a number of different things we can control um, how the uh, the USB or excuse me how the um, model function um, is working, uh, and so again we have all of that uh, within the parameters to set up here under our, our settings. Um, we do have our multi sequence, so we can come in and. Uh, again, the multi sequence gives us the ability to link different presets together. So in one trigger pull event, we can have multiple presets um, happen to affect that particular fastening. And we have uh, two of those multi sequence A and multi sequence B. And then we have our model or job function. Um, this allows us to be able to use uh, the presets within a fastening assembly. Um, so if uh, the assembly has uh, a system of 15 fasteners, um, you'll be using three different torque values. We can come in and say, uh, for our first fastening, we're gonna use preset one, and we would like to uh, use that for a count of say five. And next, we'll switch the driver to preset number two for a series of six. Then we're, we need to send a signal out uh, to a uh, notification that we've done those two. Uh, we could do that with an output setting um, here. And then we have our fastening step. Uh, we're gonna be using preset three and we'll use that for a count of four. 
And now the final step within that particular assembly process, the operator scans a barcode. Um, and once that's finished, then our assembly for that particular job is done. And we can then move on to uh, allow the system to uh, recycle and a new model can be selected or uh, we can simply repeat this particular fastening. So uh, this is more of a build type function. Um, and again, we can control that right here through uh, the model function in the software. We also have uh, the network settings. Um, if we want to go ahead and uh, put this onto the network. Uh, and then we have information regarding uh, the driver. And we also have uh, our calibration tab in here as well. We can create a backup of this particular um, setting profile. We can save that. So if we wanted to load that uh, in a future uh, time for maybe a different set of builds that may be coming, we can come in and we can then restore that file uh, to the system and load that directly to the unit. So um, again, a lot of the same functions that we have on the menu structure within the controller are exactly the same here in the software. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next tab up here, which is our monitoring tab. And this is where we have the ability to actually uh, do some uh, monitoring of a particular uh, rundown. So the first thing we'll take a look at is our graph function. Um, so this gives us the ability to uh, do a snapshot of a particular joint. So if we wanna do joint analysis, uh, there may be some issues with uh, parts that are breaking um, or under torquing or uh, things like that. So we can go ahead and we can take a look at what's happening with the joint. And so um, let me just remove this so you can see what's happening um, down here in, in the bottom portion. Uh, so we have uh, two different channels that we can monitor, just like we can on a controller. Uh, so channel one will leave at torque. And then channel two, we can go ahead and we can select angle. And then we can go ahead and hit start. And so right now, uh, the system will allow us to uh, go ahead and capture uh, the graph that happens when we run the tool down. So let me go ahead and do that. And so now you can see that we have our torque curve that has been generated uh, along with the statistical data of that particular rundown. So we have our torque here. We can come in and we can see exactly where we are at a certain point within the graph. Um, this is our angle on the top. And then we have the uh, blue, which would be the torque. Um, now, so we can, we can do um, different uh, functions um, with the graphing. Uh, you can see that if we come in and uh, I'm going to change, I'm gonna go ahead and change the fastening profile for preset one. I'm gonna add uh, a, uh, let's see, let's go into our advanced function. And I'm gonna add some reverse uh, angle after torque up. Uh, so we can see what that kind of graph would look like. So let's use an RPM of 100. And we're going to have an angle of 800 degrees. And we'll do that in the reverse rotation. And so now if we come back to our graph, uh, what, you'll, what you'll see is that So we have uh, our torque uh, initially within our profile is set to our uh, target torque of 10 inch pounds. Um, and so you'll see that we hit um, our target torque here at 10 inch pounds. And then we have the driver reverse for 800 degrees of rotation. Uh, and then you can see the amount of torque that it took to remove that um, or loosen that and then we have the rest of our functions. 
So we'll, we can get a really good picture of what's happening with the joint um, by using the uh, graph to help us uh, take, a, again, a look at what's going and we can try to make some adjustments in either to the parts that are being used or possibly the um, rundown uh, in, as a whole. Uh, and we have a lot more flexibility to understand what's happening with that particular joint. So that would be uh, the graph function under the monitoring tab. And then we also have the ability to do uh, real-time uh, data um, capture as well. So let me come back over here to our graph that we were just on. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. And we'll come over to real-time. And so I can collect click start here and now the system is going to be monitoring every event that happens with the tool um, up to this point so uh, what are certain events that happen so there are the torquing events there are events that are recorded when the uh, trigger um, is or excuse me the direction is changed from forward to reverse on the tool we also have events of errors uh, and there are, are a couple others as well um, and you can see that in the error code um, right up here. We have error code one. Um, so with this, if I go ahead and start doing uh, some rundown, so you can see I changed direction. I go ahead and um, hit the torque. You can see we have our uh, time that it took for the system to run in milliseconds here. We have our time date stamp, we have our target torque, we have the actual torque, we have our two different angle um, settings here. So we have our um, angle one and angle two, which are going to be provide our entire uh, angle that was done during the system. We have our reverse angle that we've programmed in here. Uh, and then we have our fastening complete, um, which uh, is going to be our uh, code for that as well and, and forward. So if I change to a, another preset on the controller to preset number two, you can see now we've done uh, a status change, a preset change in the event. And then if I run this down, you can see we have our fast and complete, uh, our total milliseconds, our time date and stamp, uh, the target torque, the converted torque here, or actual torque values, um, our total degrees of rotation, and uh, our, again, our status uh, as it relates to the direction that the tool is being used. So if I put the tool in reverse, and run that, you can see we captured data for that particular um, set, and uh, that will allow us to be able to collect uh, real-time data um, that is streamed to the computer. Now, the same data is, uh, can be saved internally on the SD card uh, on the system. Uh, the system. This data also can be sent out uh, via the RS-232 or to the ethernet port um, as the system is networked. So the real-time uh, data capture can be done um, without the computer uh, can be sent to um, a uh, system that uh, you can use through Modbus protocol or open protocol uh, as it relates to streaming the data from the unit. So I'll go ahead and stop that. And you can see we've, we've generated a number of different tabs uh, that we've opened up here on the top. So we have our fastening, our advanced, the screw count, the controller, uh, so if we needed to come back to any one of these, we can do it uh, within this session that we're working. Um, we can also look at the errors. If the last eight errors were here, um, we have access to use the tool remotely. Uh, if we want to be able to do some testing, uh, we would be able to see the inputs and outputs um, here as well. Uh, and then we could also use the auto customization feature um, in here as well. So. Uh, there are uh, a number of controls, uh, monitoring um, just makes it very easy to be able to program uh, what's happening on the system. And so in our uh, 
control panel uh, here under the settings menu, we have access to our inputs um, and outputs where we can assign what those are. Um, so that uh, kind of gives you a, a better understanding of how the workflow can happen with the system. And so if there's anything in particular uh, that you have a question about, uh, feel free to go ahead and put that in the chat. We can kind of um, address that uh, in a, uh, in a more uh, broader sense, or if there's something that you would like to see specific about the, the uh, EC tools, uh, we can um, set up a time where we can do more of a, a private uh, demo uh, for you. So that is a possibility for you as well, where we can kind of maybe take a look at your specific application um, and how the system might work better uh, for you to help solve um, any of your uh, fasting issues that you may have. So uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and see if we have any, uh, any questions. Right, I'm not seeing anything in the chat yet, but let's give everybody a little bit of time. All right, I'm not seeing anything in the chat, Dave. Um, our next session will be very exciting. It is about our new cordless driver system. Dave, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, so we'll be taking a look at a, a number of uh, different functions. We're primarily going to be looking at how uh, the system can be used um, in an assembly process uh, where we have guided instructions to be able to help guide the operator through the um, actual uh, work instructions, the workflow, uh, and uh, that's going to be uh, good to uh, good to see. So, hope to see you uh, here in our next session. And uh, if that's it, have a great day.